So this video is going to walk through the entire design process for the third question of assignment three, which was to design a gumball machine. Uh, the gumball machine were, was to have two inputs or two things the user could do, right? Five cents, we call that a nickel, and 10 cents, we call that a dime. And then the machine, if it receives 15 cents, would um, dispense a gumball, and if it receives 20 cents, it would dispense change. So those are the four uh, things that the machine was going to be responsible for responding to. Uh, nickels and dimes as input, and then gumballs and change as output back to the user. So the question is, how do you take a problem description like that and develop it into a circuit that will do that job for you? Well, you follow the design procedures that are set out in the course. Uh, but, of course, those design procedures are a little bit abstract, and it's worth uh, walking through the design problem so that we can sort of get a feel for where um, and how to do this kind of job. So the first thing to do is to decide how you're going to represent the state of the universe in this machine. How are you going to represent within this machine its state? And what is that state going to correspond to? So the obvious solution to that question, what does the state correspond to, is the state is going to correspond to how much money has been provided to the machine because that's how it's going to make that decision. If it's received enough money, then it's going to dispense a gumball. So what are the possible amounts of money that this machine could be holding and that would give us the idea of how to design these states? So um, if you can receive nickels and dimes, then the possible amounts of money are no money if there's... if you started up in the machine or it has recently dispensed a gumball. Uh, if you receive a, f a nickel, that would be five cents. Uh, if you receive a dime, that would be 10 cents. Uh, if you receive a dime and a nickel, that would be 15 cents. Um, and those are sort of the possible values that could be in this machine. I suppose you could keep on going, right? Dime, nickel, dime, nickel. Um, any multiple of five cents would be a possible state for this machine, except that the other side, where you where you remove value, uh, is when the machine dispenses a gumball, uh, because if you if the machine has received enough money to dispense a gumball, then it should go back to the state where it has no money left in it. So these are going to be the possible amounts of money that are in this machine. And in fact, as we'll see when we do the design, fifteen cents should make us think a little bit. Is the machine ever going to have fifteen cents in it? Because the state is a sort of the position of a machine for a period of time right, a clock cycle or whatever. And so if the machine sits in the state where it has 15 cents, then that means that the user has provided enough money for a gumball but has not received a gumball and that's a problem. And so it may be that we don't actually want to have this be a state. Maybe we want to have 10 cents be a state and then if the user puts in a nickel, then immediately the machine dispenses a gumball and we go back to the zero state. So these are sort of design decisions you can make. You can use 0, 5, and 10, and then say from 10 you go back to 0, and that's fine. You can use 0, 5, and 10, and 15, and then from 15 decide how to, how to you know, maybe always the next state from 15 will be back to 0, and then you can actually see there that you can put those two states together, and they will end up with the same kind of design anyway. But we'll walk through that process. So now we know what we want these states to be. Let's think about how we can represent those in binary. And again, there's a sort of fairly obvious solution uh, which is to represent some number of nickels deposited. Zero nickels deposited, one nickels deposited, two nickels deposited, three nickels deposited. So if that's just a count, a literal count of how many nickels, this corresponds to zero, five cents, 10 cents, and 15 cents, uh, and that will suit us well as we're doing our design. So now we want to think about how do we get from one state to the next? Where do we begin? Where do we end? And so we wanted to draw out a state diagram to help us sort of work through this design process. So we might draw out 0, 0 as a state, 0, 1 as a state, 1, 0 as a state, and 1, 1 as a state. These would be our four states. And now we have to think about how we're going to get from one state to the other. Uh, we also have two inputs, a nickel and a dime. Now, again, there's going to be two um, sort of general procedures for this. The first is to have these both be inputs and have two inputs for each machine, which means there are in fact, for every state, there are going to be four transitions out of that state. Or the second way to do this is if you think a little bit and recognize that the problem description said 
that a nickel and a dime can't both be inserted at the same time, then we already have one of these combinations be don't care, right? And maybe we have another combination, which is if nothing, if zero, zero, no nickel and no dime, then in all cases, we're not gonna transition our state, right? So the only time we're gonna transition our state is if we get a nickel or we get a dime. So either through some logic design or just by some assumption, we might be able to say that we in fact have one input, the coin, um, or the, the money, we would call this money. Uh, and then we would, might say money equals zero, be nickel, and money equals one, be dime. Now we could do it that way. We could also do it the way that I showed in my problem description, which is have both inputs be valid, and then you have a don't care when N and D are both one. But this is another way to do it. We'll walk through this procedure because it's a little different than the one that's in my solutions. So now what we have to do is have two transitions out of each state to say what happens if I'm in state zero and I get a nickel, and what happens if I'm in state zero and I get a dime. So let's let's walk through this. If I'm in state nickel, I mean, some of this stuff is fairly straightforward to do. If I'm in state nickel and I get a nickel, then I go to state five cents. And if I'm in state nickel and I get a nickel, then I go to state 10 cents. And if I'm in state 10 and I get a nickel, well, we'll have to think a little bit about that, right? Because we can go to 15 cents, but again, we might decide we just want to dispense the gumball right then and go back to zero. So we'll put that in in a second. If I'm in state dot nick, if, <clears throat> I'm in state zero and I get a dime, then I'm gonna go straight to state dime, like this. So those are the inputs we can think about for now. And now we've sort of proceeded all the way to state 10 cents and we gotta really decide what we're gonna do at this point. So there's two ways to do this. We can either go to state 15 cents and then immediately from there, dispense a gumball and go back to zero. But we don't know at this point whether we're going to dispense a gumball by itself or dispense a gumball and change because there's two ways to do this, right? If I've got 10 cents and I get a dime, then I need to dispense a gumball and change. And if I get 10 cents and I get a nickel, then I need to dispense just a gumball. So in fact, this state isn't really enough in that case. If we want a state for our sort of final dispense a gumball state to make a, a Moore machine, for example, where the inputs only depend on the state, we're going to need a fifth state, one for gumball and change and one for just gumball. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna say when we're in the state where we have 10 cents and when we receive some money, in both cases, we're gonna go back to state zero and in the process of that transition, dispense a gumball. So if I'm in state one zero and I receive a nickel, let's do it that way first. If I receive a nickel, that's a zero then I'm gonna dispense a gumball. Now I haven't put any outputs here yet. Let's start to put some outputs in. So if I receive a zero, which is a nickel, I'm gonna output what? A gumball, but no change. So now I gotta sort of specify what are my outputs, just so I keep, this tr keep track of this. G and then C, gumball and change. In that order, on my state diagram. So the gumball and no change. So that's what happens. If I'm in, if I have 10 cents and I get a nickel, I dispense a gumball, I don't dispense any change, and then I go back to state zero. If I'm in state 10 cents and I get a dime, then I also go back to state zero in a different transition. In this case, uh, if I receive a dime, I'm gonna go back to state zero dispensing a gumball and dispensing change. Because uh, the user inputted 20 cents, this transition here, means the user input 20 cents, right? Because I'm in 10 cents and I receive a dime. And so I need to give the user a gumball and change to make it fair. And then I can go back to my beginning state. So that works fine. So now let's go back and fill in the outputs for these transitions we already did. In all of these cases, when I start at zero and I go to five cents, I have no outputs. I better not, because I'm not giving anybody a five cent candy. Then this is also no outputs, and this is also no outputs, because in all three of these cases, I'm transitioning to a place where there's not been enough money inserted in the machine to get a gumball out. So there's no output, no output, no output. Now, I wanna go back and see, this is getting pretty much like it's done. I wanna double check and make sure that I've got enough transitions from every state. One input means there should be two transitions out of every state. Well, state 00 has two outward transitions, that works. 
State one zero has two outward transitions, but state zero one only has one outward transition. We only know what happens if I have five cents and I get five cents, then I go to 10 cents. If I have five cents and I get a dime, I have now enough money to dispense a gumball, so I've got to do one of these transitions back to state zero, zero again. So it's going to look like this. So if I get a nickel and then I get a dime, this transition is a dime, and I have then received 15 cents, and that means I need to go back and give a gumball, no change. And then I've got two transitions out of this state, two transitions out of this state, and two transitions out of this state. So that seems to be okay. Um, what do we do about this? Well, we don't need this state. If we're confident that this is going to give us the functionality we need, then this state by itself is, is don't care. I don't care what happens in this state. Almost. Because really, if, if the machine ever finds itself in this state, I mean, it should never get to this state. But it's possible that it might. If, we, if it starts up, in and it sort of establishes a random state that can happen sometimes uh, it might find itself in this state and if it does we want to make sure that just to be doubly safe of the operation that if it ever does happen to find itself in this state we're going to force it to go back to state zero zero because that way we know that we're not going to have a machine that has any money in it or thinks that has any money in it when it doesn't have any money right that way we know for sure that this is going to work properly we could use this as just a don't care. We could say one, one, it's never going to get there. We're, we don't care what happens when it gets there. And then just use it as a don't care condition in our design. But if we do that, then there's the possibility that we might get, um, depending on the way that we solve our design, it's possible that if the circuit finds itself in one, one, it might go back to one, one, just as a consequence of the way we design it. Who knows? Oh, the thing about a don't care is we don't know what uh, what the rest of the design is going to force that don't care condition to be because there isn't a there isn't a don't care condition in the final circuit one thing will happen or the other and so we have to know in this case what's going to happen just to make sure that the circuit's going to work the way we want it to so then we've got basically the entire state diagram and we can say to ourselves you know walk through a few examples and convince ourselves that this works before moving on to the next step which is translating this into a state table now the state table says, if I'm in a current state and I have a particular input, what is the next state gonna be? So let's figure that out. So if I'm in a current state and the state has got two state variables, so I need two state variables, Q1 and Q0, we'll call it. I mean, we could even call it Qn and Qd because this sort of corresponds to nickels and this sort of corresponds to dimes, but we'll leave it as Q1 and Q0 for now. And then our input, we said our input is going to be now M for money. And that M is going to be zero for nickels and one for dimes. Again, this is a different solution than the solution I gave you in the uh, solutions manual for the problem. Uh, you could also have Q1, Q0, N, and D. You'd have to have more transitions and more entries, but it should work out the same. Then what you're going to say is, given a current state and an input, what is the next state, Q1 plus, Q0 plus, and what is the output? Now we have two outputs. We have a gumball, G, and change, C. So these are the headers in our table, and we can go ahead and fill that in. The current state has these possibilities, right? The current state and the input have these possibilities. Then I could be one, zero, can see this one zero zero one zero one and one zero uh, sorry one one zero and one 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 those are the eight possibilities for current state and input if i'm in state uh, and i could even label these states to make sure that i understand this is zero cents this is five cents this is ten cents and this is uh don't care because we're not going to use that state but we've decided that in all circumstances we're going to go back to zero just to be safe so let's carry on. What we're going to do first is say, given a current state and an input, what's our next state? And that we can just take from that table that we just built. So if I'm in state zero and I get a zero, I'm going to go to state one. And my output is going to be zero, zero. If I'm in state zero and I get a one, that means I get a dime. And so I go to state one, zero, and my output is zero, zero. So that's all of the transitions for state zero. 
Now I look at state one. If I mean state one, and I get a one, a zero, let's do zero first. Then I go back to state, or I'll go to back, I'll go to state one, uh, one zero. Uh, is that right? If I'm in state, yeah, because this is five cents and I get a nickel. So now I'm in state 10 cents. Also output of zero. And if I'm in state five cents and I get a dime, then I have that whole process where I go, I dispense a gumball and go back to state zero, zero. So zero, zero and the gumball is the output. Now I can look at what happens if I'm in state 10 cents. This is state 10 cents. If I get a nickel, I go back to zero and I dispense a gumball. And if I get a dime, I go back to zero and I dispense a gumball and change. Oops, there we go. If I'm in state 10 cents and I get a nickel, I go, I dispense a gumball and go back to zero. If I'm in state 10 cents and get a dime, I dispense a gumball and change and go back to zero. And then state, state 15 cents, which we're not going to use, we're going to send back to zero all the time just to be sure. And there'll be an output of zero. That's a very safe design. We could use these as don't cares and maybe simplify our design a little bit, um, but this is going to be a very safe design. Now we might be able to look at this and say to ourselves, this is pretty simple uh, logic, right? There's only, the only time you go to state one zero is if you uh, have, if you're in zero cents and you get a dime, or if you're in five cents, you get a nickel. That's the only time you're going to go to state one zero because one one's not used. And then um, the only time you go to state zero one is if you're in zero and you get a nickel. Everything else, these are all back to zero intentionally or because we're not using it. So we could even design this just by looking at the truth table. If there's only one min term in the truth table, then we know that that is the solution to this um, logic design problem, because that's the next step. Now that we've got this table, the next step is to figure out what the logic to design this is going to be. Now, there's two ways to do it, of course. You could use D flip-flops, or you could use JK flip-flops. Because this is fairly straightforward logic, we're going to use D flip-flops. Uh, and then all we have to do is provide to the input of the D flip-flop the value, the logic that would provide the next value for each given state variable. So Q0 is pretty straightforward. We can look at this and just say Q0. We can just look at that and say it's min term zero equals Q1 bar, Q0 bar, and then a nickel, which is money bar. Let me just read that off the table. Q1. We can look at this and we can say, we can, I mean, you could already see that this is going to be some sort of an exclusive or pattern. Uh, you could put it in a K map if you wanted to, if you weren't sure. Uh, but we can probably read this off without even needing a K map. Q1, these are for next state, which is means this is actually D0 uh, and D1, right? So this is the inputs to these D flip flops. And that is going to be. Q1 bar, Q, uh, let's see, Q1 bar, Q0 bar, M, or it's going to be Q1 bar, Q0, Q1 bar, Q0, M bar. And again, every time you design logic, it's worth looking at this and saying, does this make sense to me? Every logic function you look at, can I explain in plain English words what this means? And this means that the only time I'm going to go to state dime, which is one zero. Uh, I'm never going to go to state one one because that's an unused state. The only time I'm going to have a one in Q1 is if I'm in state zero and I get a dime or if I'm in state one and I get a nickel, right? And that's those two cases. I'm in state zero and I get a dime. I'm in state one and I get a nickel. That's what these things mean. It's really important to look at every variable and be able to look at it and say, I know in plain English what that variable need, means. So then we can look at it and say, I'm going to pull this Q1 out, Q1 bar, and I can then look at, this is Q0 bar M, Q0 M bar, which is a classic uh, exclusive OR pattern. And that's our solution. Now we can look at for our gumball and the same kind of thing we can do. Now we have three here, so maybe that's worth doing a K map for. Let's do a K map for G. Here's G and we'll do a K map. And this is going to be a three variable K map. And it's going to look like this. 
and we're going to have Q1, Q0, M. And again, you can do it vertically or horizontally with state variables when you have the state variables first and then the inputs. Sometimes it looks a little prettier to do it vertically because you got both the state variables on one side and a single input on the other, but the result will be the same, it has to be. So then we just read down 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, now what we can see is we've got an exclusive OR pattern here, which I guess we sort of guessed at. And then we've also got, let's see if I can find another color, uh, if you can see the screen, we've got a group that looks like this. So that group there is going to be Q1, uh, Q0 bar. And again, let's think about whether that makes sense. A gumball could only possibly be dispensed if we have 10 cents. There's a few different circumstances. We have 10 cents, we get a nickel. We have 10 cents, we get a dime. In both of those cases, we're going to dispense a gumball, and in only those cases, right? So if we have, or oh no, and, and also, if we're in 5 cents, we get a dime. So three, case, three cases, right? If we're in 10 cents and we get anything, right? And that's what this thing says. If we're in state, one zero, it doesn't matter what the input is, we're gonna get a gumball, so that's there. And then we also have this case where we're in state zero one and we get a dime. Now, we could either choose to include that with an exclusive or, or just leave that by itself. Both of those would be fine. I'm gonna, in this case, just leave it by itself. And then this term here is gonna be Q1 bar um, Q0M. So we could include Q1 bar Q0, sorry, Q1, Q0 bar M, and then exclusive or that together. Uh, but that wouldn't give us this same exclusive or, so that's probably not worth doing. We'll just leave it the way it is. And then finally, C, so then we're going to go up here and we're going to say gumball is, so that we have everything together, Q1, Q0 bar, or Q1 bar, Q0 M like that. And then the uh, change, carry. The change, again, is a single min term, which means you can just read it off the table. That happens only when we are in state dime and we get a dime. That's the only time we could possibly get change. And so it is Q1, Q0 bar, and also M. Q1, Q0 bar, M. That's the same as that one, Q1, Q0 bar M. So now we could do a little bit of uh, arranging between all of these groups and say, maybe we can find some simplifications between them. Maybe we can find some commonalities, right? This term here, Q1, Q bar, Q1, Q0 bar M appears here and also here. So maybe we could simplify, but it's not going to give us a lot. And so I think we'll just do it and draw out our circuit and be done. So then... Now that we've got our four equations, we can draw out our circuit. Uh, and we got to think about what these circuits actually mean. We may even have enough space on this. Well, I'll draw it on a new page. I don't want to make it messy, right? <clears throat> so then let's see what that's going to mean. We have these four circuits and we draw them out. They're going to, two of them are going to provide inputs to our flip-flops and two of them are going to provide outputs from our circuit. So let's walk through our design for that. So first, we have our input to our circuit, our input to our uh, D flip-flop. So we'll draw right in the middle of our page a nice big beefy D flip-flop so that we know exactly what's happening. There's a D input here, there's a clock input here, there's a Q output here, and a Q bar if you want it. Now the, the uh, flip-flops that you're using in your Logisim look a little different. You've got enables and clocks and stuff along the bottom, uh, but this is what we'll use. Now we're going to have two of them. So we'll have another one uh, right below it, uh, about the same shape and size. Looks like this, D, C, Q, and Q bar. These four, and we're gonna name these so that we know which one's which. This is gonna be, we'll call this one Q1, and we'll call this one Q2. So these are gonna be two, two values uh, that are gonna make up the state, the, the single state, uh, that has four possibilities. We need two state variables to do that, and those are the two state variables. 
Now what we're going to do is build logic that will provide the input to the D flip-flops to make the state transition happen. So first of all, our D, our Q1 or D1, this is, what is it, D0, Q0, this is Q0. So Q0, that's for this one here. I've got Q1 and Q2, look at that. I'll do Q1 and Q0, just to make it clear. And so what we want to do is for the input to Q1, we'll put this logic, and for the input to Q0, we'll put this logic, and that will generate the state transitions as we have designed them in this table. So let's put that in. So for D0, which is this one down here, it's Q1 bar, Q0 bar M. So we need a three input AND gate for that. That's gonna look like this. Here's an AND gate on Q0, and it's gonna have three inputs. And one of those inputs is gonna be the inverse of our input to our entire circuit, so we need that. Here we'll put M, and that's gonna be our input to our circuit, and we will take and invert that, and that will be one of our inputs. That's M bar. But now we need Q1 bar and Q0 bar. Where do we get those from? They're not inputs to the circuit. They're outputs from the last state of the flip-flop. So they're right here. Q0 bar, we get this one here. That's going to come out and around. We'll do this. See, this is going to be... We'll bring them all around because we may need all of them. We'll see. So we'll bring this one around here. And we'll bring this one around here. And we'll bring this one around here. And then we'll bring this one, if we can see all of them, we'll bring this one all the way up and all the way around. And this is a nice little graph paper is that it gets you there. Uh, okay, so Q1 bar, Q0 bar, and M. So Q1 bar is this one. Let's even name these. This is Q1 bar. Uh, and then this one here is Q0 bar, like that. So Q1 bar, Q0 bar, and M. And then we bring these in here. This one's Q1 bar, Q0 bar, and M. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually wait until I've put this one down, and then I'll know how much space I need for the rest of it. So this one, uh, D1, is going to be an AND between Q1 bar and an exclusive OR. So we're going to use a little AND gate here. Uh, that's going to be Q1 bar is going to be one of them. And then Q0 exclusive OR M. So here is an exclusive OR. Here's an exclusive OR. Looks like that, and that's going to be Q0 and M. So where is Q0? This is Q0. That's this one here. So I can bring that through here like that, and then M is going to be like that. That's that exclusive OR, uh, and then that's ANDed with Q1 bar, which is this, uh, which we can go like that. That's the input for Q1, right? Q1 bar q0 m and then uh, we'll just finish off the input for d0 which is q1 bar q0 bar m we've already bought q1 bar down most of the way so we'll bring that into there and then we'll bring q0 bar i'll try to squeeze it in through here when you do this in your circuit diagram you're going to actually get it to be much neater and tidier so this is uh just to label it make sure we understand what's going on this is q0 uh, Q0 bar, Q0, Q1, Q1 bar, and we may not even need Q1 bar. Oh, sorry, this is not Q1 bar, this is Q1, correct. Uh, we need Q1 for the other ones. Okay, so now we're going to look at the output. Uh, and we're going to tie these clocks together. Uh, we'll do this like this, and that is going to be into our clock, like that. Now we'll need outputs for the circuit, the gumball output and the uh, change output right here. And we can actually pull those from here. These are the Q1s and the Q0s. Those are all going to give us all. What we can do is we can bring M. So this is M here. We can actually bring M around this way. Let's do this. Bring M around this way. And then we have all four uh, values that are going to generate our outputs, and we can just bring them into another circuit here that'll produce them. So let's do C first, because that one seems to be easy. Q1 is this, and then Q0 bar. So here's Q1. We'll pull that through here. And then Q0 bar is here. And then M is here. And that will give us an or an AND gate there. 
and that's our change signal. And then we will do, now we need an OR gate with AND gates after it. So we'll have an OR gate here. That's gonna be our gumball signal. And that OR gate uh, has one three input AND gate like that, a two input AND gate and a three input AND gate like this. That looks nice. The two input AND gate is Q1, Q0 bar. So Q1 is here. Bring that through like this. Q1, Q0 bar is this one. And then it's Q1, uh, Q1 bar, Q0, M. So Q1 bar is here. Bring that like this. Q1 bar. And then Q0 is right there. Look at that. And then M was here. And that's our full circuit. So that's, you know, looks kind of complicated, but if you put that into uh, your logic simulator, you'll find, hopefully, as you test it, uh, that things will work. So now what you would do is you'd put the clock in, and the clock is going to update the state for each time um, the clock flips. But what we've got for this input is we have an assumption that there's either going to be a 1 or a 0, and that 1 is going to correspond to a uh, dime, and the 0 is going to correspond to a nickel. Now, we may not have a coin every time the clock pulses. And so we might want to actually have here some sort of an enable on this to have, you know, the coin itself. And then this would be uh, the nick uh, dime or not nickel. Now, what I mean by that is this says there is a coin. And if it's a zero, there is no coin. And so it just stays, holds its state. And then this, if it's a one, then that's a dime. And if it's a zero, then that's a nickel. We talked about this kind of representation before. And then those two things together, so we can see we still have two inputs, right? But in the original specification of the machine, the two inputs were nickel and dime. But now we still have two inputs, but we sort of, we've uh, put them in a different functionality. One input says there was some sort of a coin and the other input says it was a dime or it was a nickel. That will allow us to have control over whether the uh, machine proceeds or not based on the clock. The clock will just continue to run. When the, when the uh, coin signal is high, then whether it's a dime or a nickel, that will proceed through here and that will give us the new state, whether we go to state one zero for a dime or state zero one for a nickel. And then after that, we would see uh, that we'd get our, um, our gumball signal here and our chain signal there. So that's the full circuit. That's the full design process, half an hour or thereabouts, from beginning to end. And I mean, it doesn't really take up a lot of space on your page, but you do have to do a lot of thinking to decide what you're gonna do, what the design is, and how you're gonna proceed through every step of the process. So I hope that is helpful uh, and will <laughs> give you some idea of how to study for the exam where you'll have to do a circuit like this uh, with, of course, a different problem.